and to pray. One of our guests recently said how much he is reminded just at three o'clock naturally now to pray and to pray about matters with COVID-19 and how churches and ministries are affected with it. So every day we gather to pray and inform you about the influence of COVID-19 on life and society and ministry. And today's no different. While the world is out there and they are afraid, and sometimes even in church people are afraid, we, the believers in Jesus Christ, have the confidence and hope which comes from the word of God. Our faith is in our Father, our hope is in Jesus Christ, and our comfort is in the Holy Spirit. Today, my guest is Brother Nathan Brackett. Brother Brackett is the youth pastor at Gantt Street Baptist Church in Casey, South Carolina. We met a very long time ago in ministry there at Gantt Street. He's a passionate preacher, an innovative leader in fundamentalism, and he loves missions. He's a father and husband and youth pastor, and most importantly to me, he's my friend. And so, Brother Brackett, welcome to the Ninth Hour Prayer Meeting. Thank you, Brother John. It is so good to see you. And I do want to say to everybody, what a blessing you are. I mean, not just through the ninth hour, but all through the years I've known you, your, your attitude, your internet presence. I, I tell everybody in our church that has kids or has social media, if you're wondering about what kind of a presence you should have online, a good rule of thumb is to follow Brother John O'Malley. And I just want to appreciate uh, publicly your testimony that you have. And I'm so grateful for it. Oh, thank you, Brother Nathan. I really appreciate it. You know, I, I love the folks at Gantt Street. And I love you and your family. And I'm so pleased with how God is using you there in ministry. And you know, these days are unusual days. And, and I know you're in touch with youth in our churches, not just your church, but other churches as well, obviously specializing there at Gantt Street Baptist. But you have a heart for seeing young people serve Christ. I know this from private conversations, and I know it from as we have worked together in ministry there at the church. But what is the current state emotionally and spiritually amongst all the youth with whom you have connection, both against street young people and others? Well, I think, I think honestly, it's it's two directions. Hmm. Um, especially with not being at church and seeing everyone so often and having the routine of, yes, I'm going to stand face to face, to face before my pastor. I'm going to stand face to face for my youth pastor. I'm going to talk about the devotions I had this week because we're not seeing each other face to face. I've seen two directions. One, those who were already teetering on not being all in mm. have fallen further away quickly. But those who have been faithful in the beginning, now that we can't meet, now that this has come upon us, they're staying faithful. Mm -hmm. And uh, e even more so than they have before. Mm. It's like they've turned it up a little bit. So here in our church, one of the things that we do with our teen life program on Wednesday nights is we write our own little devotions. And it's very simple. It's about three verses each day, a passage for them to read. And then there's a couple of questions for them to answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually turn those in each Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It has been such a thrill to my heart to see the ones who have been faithful and remain mm -hmm. faithful. They, they can't turn them in physically. So they're taking pictures and texting them to me. And uh, I've just been very encouraged by them and their faithfulness. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there's probably a little bit of a parental action going on behind the scenes, encourage them to, to stay faithful. Um, but it does seem like if they were faithful before, they're continuing. But if not, they have, they've hastened the other direction pretty quickly. Wow. You know, I haven't thought about it. And I'm so glad you said this because in reality, context makes the difference, right? If they've got parents that are, are working with them and helping them, that helps. But not all church kids have both parents involved. And so it's really the faith of the young person. And then I just thought about this. What if we could never have church again? Would you have gotten enough to last you a lifetime? 
And what a pressure that is for parents, pastors, youth pastors, missionaries, everybody to say, let's put everything we can into our young people. And uh, I just, I don't know, I'm just glad you're in the place you are and with the attitude and mindset that you have. So how have you adapted your ministry to stay connected in this disconnected culture? Well, it has been a learning curve. Um, for many pastors that are out there, I will say this, uh, if they have a team of sound guys or a web person in their church, they pretty much delegate it. And they say, okay, we're going to go live stream, have it all together. And they could just make an announcement or a tweet. Hey, this is what we're doing. Yeah. I'll see you there Sunday. And they just show up and preach. Well, in the youth ministry, we don't have any of those guys. And I'm 46 years old. So, I mean, even having a cell phone uh, is something that I did not go to school or college with. It wasn't until I was married and have a family before I even had one. So I still don't know technology like I should. And to figure out, like we, we went live stream the, the first week, we just said, okay, we got to take junior church and we got to go live stream. So we had to figure that out. And then our teen life program, we said, all right, we, we, we can't meet, we, we got to go live stream. And the hurdles, uh, all the things we had to do, but I will say this, and I don't know if if Facebook listens or if I'm allowed to even say their name uh, over the, the airwaves like this, but go for broke. I, I'm going to say, I praise the Lord for that because yeah. for someone like me, I didn't know what to do. I don't even have a Facebook. So I, I pirated my wife's and took it over. And that's what we've been doing. The church is now putting it on the website and sharing it with that. But it, it has been interesting that, well, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, um, a lot of us were saying, you know, Facebook is evil. It's it's of the devil. And then 10 years later, we're saying, hey, follow me on Facebook for the message today. So uh, that, that has been a way of changing it. Even our um, good news, our after school good news program that we do at the local elementary school. We've been doing one for 12 years there every Wednesday during the school year. And so now we don't even have a contact with those kids. So they, they didn't come to church before because that was their church. We, we went to the school. And now, so we're trying to get them to, to join us online. We've reached out to those families and encouraged them. But it, it has been a challenge just to be able to keep in contact with everybody. Mm. Because it's not the same. Sending out a text, even sometimes a phone call, it's not the same. And then when you do get to see them, oh, but the emotions that are there, you're so happy to see them. You just... Yeah. You want to rush up and hug them, but then, you know, yeah. you remember where we are, you got you to hold it back. And yeah. yeah. Well, Brother Nathan, I'm excited to hear you speak of it. Now, have churches in South Carolina begun to meet? Has Gantt Street figured well, out what to do yet? That actually is a very unique position we've been in. Um, the Lord has blessed us in our church. We have the uh, chief of staff for the South Carolina Emergency Management Division, who's a member of our church. So any questions we have, I mean, he has our governor's ear because he works with them every day. Mm. So we know firsthand what we are supposed to do. And so right away, we started following the guidelines. But our governor has been such a blessing. Government master from the get-go said, this is a constitutional issue. I am not going to forbid our churches to meet. However, if you do, you've got to understand the consequences for meeting recklessly. Mm. And so we, as a church, followed their guidelines, and we stopped meeting back in March. Um, and it hasn't been until this past Sunday that we actually met inside the church for the first time. Mm. And we had, it was unique. We had social distancing um, parameters that we went through. Uh, we measured things off and assigned seating. And it was just, it was odd, but that spirit was still there. It was church, you know, the church there, I was so glad to see each other. And it, and again, it was hard to, you know, to fight off trying to hug everybody. Right. Sure. And of course, at, in Gantt Street style, after it was over, an hour after the service, everybody's still hanging around outside. Aww, talking. That's so sweet. It was good to have the church back together mm -hmm. physically again.
Amen. You know, I re- reminded Johnny Pope said on the ninth hour a couple of weeks ago, he said that his church was just a hugging church. And when I thought about it, I thought about Gantt Street. It's yeah. like you don't make it in, you know, unless you've got 12 hugs, man, you're, you, yeah. you're on the struggle bus, you know. Yeah, I warn new members. I tell them, I said, listen, buddy, I'm a hugger. So yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Nathan's a big boy, too, by the way. Brother Br- Brackett and I are about the same size. And uh, he just ended up with the hair. I got into the line that was bald. He got into the hairline. But, uh, but Brother Brackett, take a, a couple of minutes here and just talk to parents and, and talk to our youth that are watching and, and just take us to the word of God or whatever thoughts are just stirring in your heart. You know, young people are disconnected like never before and they already feel socially challenged anyway. And then you've got moms and dads who are pulling their hair out and you're a youth pastor, you, you do ministry and you do it well. And I want you to just kind of speak words of peace and hope if you could. Sure. Um, I, I would just recommend this, moms and dads that are listening, um, whether or not you have young children that are kind of aware of what's going on or teenagers. Once you start hearing them talk, you know that there's an element of fear when they hear things. Oh, you mean if I, I go to Walmart, I touch this, I could get it. And there's part of us that try to, to scare our kids by saying, let's be responsible And if I tell you you're going to get this virus by touching this and licking your hands, maybe it'll keep you from doing it. And, you know, that's that's what we do as a parent. But inside, they're they're mulling that over. And it's weighing on them. And so as a parent, you've got to help them with that fear on a way to to channel that thing and put it in perspective. And I guess one of the verses that I, I love to go to when dealing with any kid about the story of my life, my family's life, when times like that come is Psalms chapter 28, verse number seven. Mm. That's when we say, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, And with my song, I will praise him. Mm. So I think it helps the kids to say, look, sure, that thing is out there. It is a real threat. But the Lord is our help and our shield. He wants us to go to him. When our heart trusts in him for salvation and for day-to-day things, it is helped. And because of that, we can rejoice even in this tough time Mm. and rejoice as a family and be glad as a family and then sing our song. Let it tell others about what he's done. Mm. Just reassure your children that sure, this thing's pretty big, but the Lord's bigger. And when we trust in him, he can work on our behalf. Mm. Brother Brackett, thank you. Uh, What you've shared is so pertinent and so helpful in this hour. And uh, parents, as you watch today and you get your young people together tonight and rewatch this, it'll be online. You can watch it. Sit your kids down and let them see this. And maybe watch it again yourself to remind yourself that all of the news that we hear is dramatic. It is strong. This is lethal, but God is bigger. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, that's what we have to say. Well, Brother Brackett, thank you for being my guest and thank you for uh, making effort to be here as well. And I want you to greet your family, greet the church, you know, kind of social distance wave and we'll get all this stuff over with before I come back again uh, next winter. But, But Brother Brackett, one of the most important things we do is we pray. And, and there are people who are afraid. I hear from them regularly. And there are people who suicide rates are up. I mean, this is such a real thing. Uh, I just learned, I'm trying to confirm, but I just learned a mutual friend of ours is in the hospital with COVID-19. And it's just, it's just real. But let's take our fears and bring them to the Lord and let's walk away with faith and let's trust our God to be bigger than everything. Would you lead us in prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, thank you for being so good to us. Mm. Lord, thank you that you care enough about us that you want us to come to you in prayer and cast our burdens on you. Lord, there are so many things that are going through our heart right now, things that we need help with. Lord, I do pray that you would give wisdom 
to our president. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you put a hedge of protection about them, especially as those around them seek to, to harm them. Mm -hmm. Lord, I do pray that you would help him give them wisdom. Lord, for our governing bodies, our governors, Lord, I pray that you give each of the states wisdom as far as reopening how and when and why and where and guidelines. Lord, I do pray that you'd help them. Lord, the many, many pastors who feel the burden of trying to make that decision on how to reopen their church and what to do. And mm. Lord, I pray that you would grant them special wisdom. And then with the call that they make, Lord, I pray that you would grant them protection. I pray that you would put a hedge of protection about them, that we might be able to meet safely. And Lord, there wouldn't be infections through the churches. Mm. Lord, I do pray that you would help all the youth pastors, children's workers that are out there. Lord, there are so many things that are happening this summer. All of these summer camps that are closing, mm. that had the opportunity to have all these young people come to hear the gospel. Lord, I pray that you would open a door of opportunity for them to still yes. in some way minister to the kids that would have come. Lord, I pray that you would give the other camps wisdom that haven't made decisions yet. Help them, Lord, to decide on what to do that would not just be good for them, but, Lord, it would be good for you and the gospel's sake. Lord, I do pray that you'd help us as we go forward, that we would put our trust in you with everything. Yes. Lord, we have so many friends, family members that are affected by this right now. Lord, I do pray that you would give grace in so many of these areas. Mm. Lord, I do pray for Brother Austin that you would touch him and heal him. Mm. Lord, please, on his behalf, make him well again so he could get back to ministering for you. Lord, thank you for being good to us. Lord, I pray that in the face of this thing, we would all trust in you more than we ever have. Yes. And no matter the outcome physically, Lord, we're grateful for what you've done for us. Just that you could give us a chance to hear the gospel. Lord, you've been better to us than we've ever deserved. And we just want to say thank you and praise you for what you have done and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you so much for Pastor Nathan being on today with us. Thank you for the church where he serves. Thank you for Brother Gene Rowell and his leadership there at Gantt Street. Thank you for Miss Nicole and the way that she is such a help meet to Brother Nathan. Thank you for the young people that are in their youth group. Father, how I care for this church and their people so much. And I thank you for them. Thank you for their prayers. Thank you for their love for missionaries. Thank you for teaching their people, not only how to just live, but how to love people and further how to evangelize their community. Lord, I think about the young people that are in the public school group that they cannot get to because they don't have that way of getting to them. Keep them, Father, protect them. May they seek out Mr. Nathan and others from the church that they'll be able to have effective ministry back to them as a result of them reaching out. Help them find their way to Gantt Street. And Father, protect those young people. Lord, there's so much that Satan has reserved for them this summer. In a summer of idleness, which is often filled with mission trips and camps and other things, to now down to we have COVID-19. But God, you are in control. And I ask you, Father, to please do as only you can do. Show yourself strong. Father, every day we come to you and ask you the same. Stop the virus. Help our world leaders to fear you and to be surrounded by people who fear you. Father, I pray that you will use this to help our churches find a, a door of utterance and a boldness in their witness. I pray for those healthcare workers, even Miss Nicole, Brother Nathan's wife, as she is involved in healthcare, as well as her mother. I pray, dear Father, that you will help them and protect them, keep them safe. And then, Father, I think about the sheriffs of the various counties and parishes and boroughs across the nation. I think about those who are mayors in individual municipalities, governors of states and commonwealths, those of both houses of Congress, as well as the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. 
Mike Pence, the vice president, Donald Trump, the president. Each of these need godly counsel. Each of these need a fear of you. Each of these need to make decisions based on a holy and healthy fear of you. Surround them with godly counsel, I pray. Lord, be with our pastors, men like Brother Gene Rowell and Brother Nathan Brackett and others who are around the country trying to figure out, let's get back to church as safely as possible when allowed. Father, may we not be known for our boisterousness or our belligerence, but rather let us be known for our grace in these hours. May we have opportunities to witness to government officials because of our testimony. May we have opportunities to be a blessing to those in leadership in our counties because of grace that we've shown in these hours. Give wisdom in the days ahead. Please let our churches not be a petri dish for the spreading of this virus, but rather may it be a haven of rest and safety. Renew our worship and courage, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. Brother Brackett, you've been such a treasure today, a blessing to us. Thank you for that. And uh, tomorrow, stay tuned on the ninth hour prayer meeting. Brother Mark Rasmussen from West Coast Baptist College and Lancaster Baptist Church will be on talking about Christian education and what's been happening um, in, the, in his field. He's, he's a friend of many missionaries and a friend of churches as well. And so he's going to be on tomorrow. I thank you, Mrs. Dundon, for interpreting for the deaf for us and brother Nathan Brackett. Thank you for your time until tomorrow. May God richly bless us.